Hi, this is Ralph, and I want to create a little solution video to the test we just had in CIS 235. I provided you with this Excel file, and we had some directions, and there's various little tasks you had to do in order to uh, complete this Excel file. So I'll just kind of go through these. The first one is the stats worksheet. You need to provide an average for each student, their average quiz grade, and the rank for each student. I gave a couple samples here, but I'll go ahead and delete those. So average is pretty easy. I'm just going to do an equals average function, and I'll average the two quiz scores there. There we go. So there's the average. And for rank, I wanted to take a rank of their average and compare it. So the student who got 80, did they rank high or low? So for a rank, I'm going to go ahead and do the rank function. The number I want to rank is there in that cell. The reference, or the range that I want to rank, is going to be the collection of all average scores, which I haven't filled out yet, but I'll do that momentarily. So all average scores. Now I know that I'm going to have to use the same range for all of these functions, so I'll go ahead and make that range absolute. And uh, that's about it. So currently, there we go, the score of 80 ranks as number one is the best score, but let me go ahead and autofill these down. And here we go. So if I scroll down a bit, the student that averaged 92.5 ranked number one. They had the highest average grade in the class. So there's the average and the rank function. And then we also had to provide the average for each quiz, the median for each quiz, and the mode for each quiz. Oh, I almost forgot. I also wanted you to freeze panes. So I'll go ahead and select this. Uh, so there we go. I'm going to select row two. I'll go to view, freeze panes, freeze panes. There we go. So now to get the average, median, and mode, I'll simply do an average function of B2 through B31. There we go. And I'm also going to do a median. I'll just type in B2, B31, and I want the mode B2, B31. Okay, so I get the average, median, and mode of the, mode of the quiz one score. I'll just autofill it over. There we go. Average median mode of quiz two. So that was all you had to do on the stats function. Let me move over to the financial info. Uh, I'm sorry, the stats worksheet. Let's move over to the financial info worksheet. You had to plug in a, a car price, and it was a different car price for everybody. I'll go ahead and put in 36000 for my car price. And my down payment, I'm going to go ahead and make my down payment 15% um, of the car price. So I'll just sell times 0.15. Loan amount will be equal to the price minus the down payment. There we go. You had a four-year loan, 6.9% interest rate. Now to figure out the monthly payment, I'll use the PMT function. And I'm going to use this interest rate divided by 12. The number of periods in, ye in years times 12. And for present value, I will do a negative cell containing the loan amount. So my car monthly payment would be 731 and 34 cents. Now for total paid, we have to figure out every check you had to write for this car, which is simply going to be the number of payments you made times how many years you paid them times the number of months per year plus your down payment. So this $36,000 car actually cost me 40,500 because I financed it. My finance cost is simply going to be how much I really paid minus the price of the car. So because I didn't pay cash, I had to pay $4,500 extra basically in finance charges. So there's your uh, payment function. I also had to do a future value function. For years left, I simply take my retirement age minus my current age, monthly investment. Um, this was different for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and put in 360 a month rate of return is provided, and then the future value. So I'm going to use the FV function and interest rate, cell containing a rate divided by 12, number of periods, cells containing the, cell containing the years, times 12. Uh, my payment, I'm going to do a negative version of the cell containing my monthly payment, and there's my future value amount. So 360 a month for 35 years at 11.5% interest rate should net me over $2 million. So that was your payment and future value functions. Now, I also had to create an amortization table based on this original loan amount up here. So let me go ahead and structure this. So I'm just going to do payment one, payment two, and I'm going to autofill this down to 48. Oops, a little carried away there. 
There we go, 48 payments. Now my beginning balance is going to be equal to my loan amount. Payment is going to be equal to my calculated monthly payment. I'll go ahead and make that absolute. My interest calculation is going to be equal to my interest rate, absolute, divided by 12 times the beginning balance in that row. There we go. Principal is going to be equal to my payment minus my interest. Ending balance is equal to my beginning balance minus my principal. And in the second row, beginning balance is equal to the ending balance from the previous row. Then to finish this, I'll just autofill my beginning balance from the second row down. For payment, interest, principal, and ending balance, I can autofill from the first row down. And I just look and make sure my amortization table zeroes out ending balance at the last payment. So there's the amortization table. Okay, next on the agenda was over on the client info worksheet, so let's jump over here. And you had to give a penalty, a, uh, a late charge, I guess, for each client that was past due by 30 days. So this is going to require a little if function. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a bit more here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and write one for this first client. So equals if. If the client's past due amount is greater than 30, then you're going to take their balance and multiply it by 10%. Otherwise, they don't have a penalty, so I'll just give them a zero. There we go. So this first client, they have a balance of $100, past due 10, so let me just go ahead and uh, autofill that down. And there we go. So there's the penalty. And you could have formatted as currency. It didn't ask you to do that, but so there's our penalty calculation. Next, you had to do a couple little text functions here in order to find some piece of data. So. In this one, I wanted you to extract the three numbers in the middle of the sequence, keeping in mind that sometimes there's three digits, sometimes there's two digits, so it's not just the three three numbers. So basically we have to get the middle number after the third. And although there's a number of interesting ways to do this, and some students did some cool and creative ways using if functions, um, I'll just go ahead and show you one of the several techniques that can work. Okay, so I'll just delete this first one here, and I want to display characters starting from the midpoint, the midpoint of cell E2. I'm just going to work on E2 and then autofill down. Um, now the starting position is going to be one character after the hyphen, so they all have a hyphen there after their first three characters. Some you could have started this, at, you could have literally typed in number four, but I'll go ahead and start it from the hyphen. So let me find that hyphen. I'm going to find the hyphen within E2. And since I want to go one character after that, I'll do a plus one. So I'm still in my mid function here. I'm going to start displaying the middle of E2, after one place after the comma, and then really how many characters. It's going to be three or two. I don't know, you know, maybe it's three, maybe it's two. So what I'm going to do, the number of characters, I'll go ahead and take the total length of cell E2, and I'm going to subtract the number of characters that I know I don't need. For instance, there's three characters in the beginning, there's four at the very end, that's um, seven plus two hyphens, that's nine. Whatever's left is going to be in the middle there, so I'll just do uh, minus nine. Close that off. There we go. So there's my middle characters. Let me just autofill this so we can see. There we go. So two characters and three characters. We get those middle numbers. Let's check what else we had to do. This one, even though it looks longer, was actually probably a little bit easier. Uh, for this one, you just had to display the street address, um, so basically leading up to the comma. So let me go ahead and delete that street there. I'm going to display characters from the left, um, the cell containing the address, how many, well, up until that comma. So let me go ahead and do a find the comma within H2. Oops, I forgot to close that off, so let me just click yes. And here we go. Notice that I have a little problem though. I also displayed the comma. So I don't want to go to the comma. So I found the location of the comma. I really want to go one before that. So let me do a subtract one. Fix that up. There we go. So that's the street address. And I already provided the city and the uh, state extracted. And the very last thing you had to do on here was just display a fake zip code. Basically, I asked for any random five digit number. So for this one, uh, use a good old ran between. Uh, the smallest five-digit number you can think of. Um, I'll just do 11,111 to 99,999. 
There we go. Bunch of five digit numbers. There you go. Bunch of fake zip codes. So that's all you had to do in the client info worksheet. And last but not least in the Excel portion of the exam is over on the charting worksheet. And a few things to do here. First, you had to calculate the gain loss of the uh, individual stocks, and then you had to create a couple charts. And here are some sample charts for us. Okay, so in my sample one, it started at 11, it closed at 10, so it lost a dollar. So what you need to do here is simply take the um, closing price equals the closing price. In this case, it is a E2, okay, minus the open price, in this case, B2. So you need to figure out that difference, certainly. And this is showing as a percentage, don't, so don't be thrown off by that. That's a negative one there. Now, based on the difference, you know, this is the gain loss in a dollar amount, but we wanted the percentage. So let me go ahead and, and close this in parentheses. So there's the dollar gain or loss divided by the opening price, B2. That's the negative 9.1%. There we go. So my TCF stock, it rose 13%. My GND stock, it rose 11.1%. Okay. Now, once you got that part, then you had to create the chart over here. So the first one was really not too tricky. It was simply a, a bar chart. Nothing uh, terribly unusual about it. So there's the uh, sample one. In order to get this one, I just need to select all of my various stock symbols. There we go. I'll use my control key to select all of my gain loss percentages. Got those selected. I'll jump over to insert bar chart, just the default one, top left, 2D bar chart. There we go, so there's the bar chart. Don't really need that legend, so I'll get rid of the legend. And let's see, the only other really thing I asked you to do, I did want you to um, reverse the axes here. Notice how in my original data, CFA, TCF are the first ones, but on this chart they're near the bottom. So you can right click, oops, that's kind of off my recorder, so let me scroll up here. Right click on any one of these axes points, format axes, and categories in reverse order. Close it. There we go. So now it's up at the top and looks like the sample. So that was the gain loss bar chart there. And you also had to make this stock chart. And this wasn't too bad since we already have the data for it. I'm just going to select all the stock symbols, the open, high, low, close prices. Select all of those. I'm going to jump over to insert, other charts, and there are stock charts. Okay, there's the high, low, close. And the open high low close, that's the one we want. Choose that chart, there it is. Um, don't really need a legend there. And there is the open high low close chart. And that concludes the Excel portion of the exam. And now what I'm going to do, we had to do a word portion. Now for the word portion, I didn't provide you a file. You had to create it from scratch based on a visual aid provided in the directions. So I'll go ahead and recreate that one. Okay, now I'm over on a web browser because one of the skills I asked you to do for the word portion was to download a font from the web. So I asked you to go to 1001freefonts.com and I asked you to specifically get a font called Annabelle Script. And hey, very convenient for us. It was um, the first one on the page and it happens to still be there. That's kind of nice. So let me go ahead and download the Windows download. And I'm going to go ahead and just save this. And I will save it to my desktop and click Save. And it's downloaded. And there it is. So I right click on this. I'm going to go ahead and do an Extract All. Extract. Once it's been extracted, I can right click and install. Of course, I've already installed it on my computer when I made the test. So yes, I'll go ahead and replace it. So you had to download and install that font. That takes care of that one. So now I'm on this Word document here, and you had to pretty much create this from scratch. So you're creating a form letter that can that can use a mail merge from that Excel. So one of the first things I asked you to do, though, was create a title. And I've got a visual aid here in front of me, the finished sample. But you had to put in a title, and uh, so I'm going to use the title style. There we go. And I had mine as Ralph Co. Industries, but you had to format this title style, so or modify the title style. I mean, so let me go ahead and open up my styles dialog box. There it is. Let me grab my uh, title style and I will modify it. I'm going to use my Annabelle script font. Let's see if I can't find it here. There it is, Annabelle script. And let's see. I also asked you red, bold, and centered. Okay, it's pretty straightforward so I'll do I'll do a dark red though and I'll bold it and I will center it there we go so now that 
title style has been modified and of course I can see it in my title menu here and I can also see it if it's if done correctly I can see it up in the title menu up there there we go then it was basically creating a mail merge now you could have done this process in a number of different sequences I'll go ahead and jump over to mailings I'm gonna start actually I'll, I could just go right into select recipients to be honest with you so I'll just do select recipients use existing list now the Excel file that I was just working on I did save that to my desktop uh, it's, I saved it as Excel test so it's got all the modifications there I want to go to the client info worksheet click OK and now I can start to put this letter together I'll go ahead and put in today is what is today today's May 2nd so I'll go ahead and put in May 2nd 2010 and then basically just had to create this little form letter let me turn off formatting marks for a bit and then I asked it to do an address for client street city state and zip code so let me go ahead and put in the clients name I'll go to my mailings and then I can insert merge field client street insert city comma space state space and zip code then I had you write a basic little letter uh, dear insert merge field client okay you currently have a balance of some amount we'll figure that out in just a second that is so many days past due please send payment in the envelope provided and then sincerely Carl collector so that was our letter and then let me just go ahead and select this so that you have a balance so I need their balance information there it is there it is how many days past due insert merge field past due and that was that part of it now you also have to do a few little aesthetic things I asked you to um, set the right margin to about three inches you could have done this by simply taking this and dragging it over by hand there it is one two that's two and a half inches so there's a three inch margin right there uh, one two and three or you could have gone of course to um, page layout margins custom margins and you could have manually set the three inches that way so a couple ways to go about it no big deal and I also wanted you to put a, a either a text box I said shape but a couple people did text boxes it worked fine so I'm gonna go ahead and insert a rectangle shape I'm just draw it there for a moment let me change the text wrapping to behind text and I'm gonna zoom out a lot really quick just so it's easier for us to see this and I asked you to kind of stick this so it's taking up pretty much the left side of the dot or I'm sorry the right side of the document and I will change it a little bit here oops there we go I want to be on the format I'm gonna change the fill to a texture fill and I'll just pick a nice little marble pattern and while I'm here let me all say no outline so there we go so you had to do this basic look so there's the template of our form letter now back on mailings I can just simply finish this up I can do a finish and merge edit individual documents all there we go so now you've got a document that has a different letter on every page then you had to save this and this was the document you would have turned in for the word portion of the exam and that really concludes the whole uh, the whole test a lot of it was in Excel a little bit in Word a bunch of various skills so take care